Happy Saturday, y'all. It's Chit Chat Time with Jen. And today I'm going to be answering a question that was sent to me. Um, that can happen to any new horse owner or any horse owner um, at any time where they have a struggle catching their horse can't halter it it run the horse runs away it sees you or hears you and goes yeah no i'm it's not on my agenda today so the question was i can't ca catch my horse in my paddock and what are the things that i can do i'm really frustrated and thank you for that question by the way and i know a lot of horse owners have struggled with this in the past because we have to catch that horse now um it should be easy this horse you know sally bob whomever in the past has been very easy to catch and it's very easy to do these things but this horse runs away from me so one of the things that I want to encourage all of you to do is to spend some undemanding time with your horse. Now, your horse could be in a stall. In Florida, during the daytime, the horses are in stalls with a fan on because, you know, we have high heat index warnings and the bugs and the sweat and you name it. The other horses will be hopefully hiding under big shade trees or in a shelter outside. Mine are, luckily there's big, huge, um, I think they're oak trees, water oak trees in the paddock and they, they stay underneath those, it's lovely. But what if your horse runs away from you? So my horses, so I'll talk about my horses, they're in a really large paddock and I, what I would do is to go to the gate, sit one of my lawn chairs down, bring my notebook, bring a book along, um, pen and paper so that you can write about how you feel. Bring some water, some, you know, a cup of coffee or iced tea. I know down here, I think they call it sweet tea in Florida. So um, why would you do that? Because behind a protective contact, which is a gate or a stall door, you can feel less anxious about having to catch your horse. And the horses feel less anxious because the predator feeling the energy that comes out of us to go catch our horse is gone we're just there and so horses can feel that shift of energy and they can go Phew, okay and then if they start feeling that shift of energy going down where their parasympathetic uh, hormonal system starts um, coming in instead of their adrenaline system, which is the sympathetic nervous system, they can start feeling curious. What are you doing over there by your gate? Now, a lot of horses are fed at the gate. So the gate can be a really good reinforcer for your horses. How about that? And so when they have habitual things that they do, or you do with your horse or your barn owner does is twice a day they're fed at the gate they go "Ooh, there's an association made at the gate that's fantastic so sitting at the gate could be a really good thing they might go "Ooh, what's that human oh that's my human doing at the gate i don't want to go play i don't want to ride i don't want to go on the trailer but what is she doing or what is he doing over at the gate? So we sit there and I like to write. I like to pray. I like to just be and breathe. Now there is this um, thing called heart to heart. Horses in our presence can feel our heartbeat and our heartbeats start synchronizing. So if we bring our breathing into play, that also can help what's going on with our energy going out. So as we sit there, our horses might go, what's she doing? Why isn't she coming out? Huh, 
maybe I'll look over there, turn an ear over. And as we just go, yeah, that's fantastic. You are the most amazing horse. What a great teacher you are, my beloved horse. You're my cute little doodle bug. I got my really frost. Oh, no, I'm not. I'm not frustrated. I, I, I will be able to catch you. I know that we are going to develop harmony and connection and, you know, everything that my heart desires with my horse will come to pass. I know that. And so we wait. What does your horse do? And as we wait, the horse may never come but they're very aware of you. Why? Why do I know that? Because I've done this numerous times with new horses in training. And I do this with my own horses, especially if I've moved them from one place to another. I allow them to connect with me, not me making them connect. And so my horses are naturally curious. What you doing over there, mom? Is it feeding time? What do you want to do? And there I can just be with them and say, hey, I love you. <sighs> with no intention to do anything. And that's really hard for us as equestrians, especially as type A, me. I have an agenda. I have things I have to do. And here's my list. And I need to fix your boo-boos. I need to do your hooves. I need to brush you. I probably need to give you a bath because it's nine to five out and it's disgusting humidity causes you to sweat but you know will my horse choose that will they come and connect with me and say yeah that feels good um i know in this weather i'm not going to be riding so yay you know they go who that's kind of fun you know we don't, and uh, they've been out of commission with me since April 13th, we haven't ridden because of my broken arm. That is healing. It's doing much better. Thank you. But in this undemanding time, can you just be? And in your writing, in your notebook, ask yourself, am I frustrated? Am I anxious? What if they don't come? What if they aren't curious? What if, what if, what if, what if? And let's take those what ifs and just be and allow them to be so that energy of you isn't going out to them because they can feel that. I promise you they can. So as you're sitting there and they don't come, give yourself, I know I travel a half an hour, give yourself a half an hour to an hour of just sitting there. Be a gentle observer of your surroundings. Look around, see where the trees are. Is the wind blowing in the grasses? Acknowledge the wind. Acknowledge the trees that are our canopies over us that give us shade and help us with oxygen. Acknowledge the grasses around you. You know, look at the ground. Look at the wildlife that's around you and be curious about it. Be curious. Because you know what, as we become more curious about our surroundings, we change inside of us. And so then write about that. How did you feel about that as you were sitting there? So let's say after an hour, your horses are still out there and maybe they've you know, looked at you, maybe they haven't. Um, Come back tomorrow and do the same thing. The goal is not to catch your horse. The goal is not to put the halter and lead rope on. That's down the road if you can't catch them. Okay, it's down the road. Don't, don't worry about it. I know they need to be brushed and groomed and have their feet done and all of that stuff. But if we are the predator chasing the horse, I'm telling you, it's frustrating. You've got that energy of a predator. I don't like that word. Let's, can we change that word? But that in the, them being a prey animal, that's the energy we give out. 
So let's call it just an energy that the horses don't want to be with. Maybe we call it that. Is that better? Comment below. Is there a better word than that? Because, you know, we use that because we are in the animal kingdom. The prey animals are the horses. They don't eat meat. Predators eat meat. We eat meat. Even if we're vegetarian, we can eat meat. So we're both. We're both prey and predator. But when we're going a direct line after a horse, they feel that energy. So the second day, how about we spend seven days and just see what happens? Undemanding time, no agenda. And write about it. And see how you feel about what's happening happening with your with this situation. I know a lot of people get very anxious and frustrated and they probably will quit because you know that's not fun and how stupid is that or excuse me. I don't like that word either, but it's not working. I promise you it will because guess what your horses will start going, what is she doing? Why isn't she coming? And then, so let's say one of these days, the horse, your horse or the herd comes to the gate. Let's say they're with other horses and other horses come and go, hey, what you doing down there? And you're going, I just love you. I just love being right here. And thank you for coming. Be in that state of gratitude. Be in that state of thankfulness. Fill your heart with all things lovely and joyful and blessings and then let that be don't go immediately up to them and start doing stuff allow that to be that day and the next day come back so this isn't going to take a long time unless your horses are hiding in the 40 acres back there then that's a little bit different but if they're in a paddock and they can see you, they'll start being observant and curious and what you're doing. And so as you're writing, go look, as you're sitting there and you're writing, go back to day one and read those pages or a paragraph or a line and just go, have I changed in this week? Have I changed? And if you haven't, ask yourself why. Why am I still feeling anxious and this, whatever you're feeling? And so I encourage you to not go get your horses until you start letting go of those emotions and just be. And allow your horses to just be. It's a good thing. So that's my first step. Um, if this resonates with you, if you've done this, if you have experienced this or have never done it or it's whatever, why don't you comment below? Let's build a community to, to broaden this out so people can have a voice in a community. A lot of you are alone. You know, I'm here. And a community can be built to support and to share and to ask questions and to give guidance and to go, this worked for me. And I'd like you to hear about it. So let's do this together. Blessings to you on your family, on your herd, on this community. Please share this with others because we're not alone. Blessings, thank you.